Hi, I'm Jim Covington on behalf of the Illinois State Bar Association. Today is October 26, and this uh, is this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. Have five bills we'd like to talk to you about, or five issues. The first we've spoken of before, the Health Care and Family Services rules implementing the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005. These rules have now been issued. They will be effective January 1 of 2012. There will be a good summary article in the November-December issue of the Illinois Bar Journal. Right now there's a short snappy uh, snapshot by Helen Gunnerson that is on our website under Illinois Lawyer Now. It's a two-page summary of these things. Uh, I think we need to give a shout out to our Elder Law Section Council of the ISBA. They've kind of waged a 18-month slog to help make these rules more fair to seniors and their families. They've done a great job. In particular, I'd like to give a shout out to Heather McPherson of Freeport, uh, William Cybers, and I hope I'm pronouncing Bill's name right, of Quincy, Carrie Peck of Chicago, and Diana Law of Aurora. And uh, anyway, those rules should be up soon or now at the Illinois Register, which is a part of the Secretary of State's website uh, in Springfield. The uh, second bill I'd like to talk about is Senate Bill 1694 that path, passed both chambers today. The General Assembly will have 30 days to send it to the governor. He will have 60 days to take action on it. It'll have an immediate effective date if he signs it. We hope he does sign it. This is an ISB initiative that was suggested to us by our former president, Mark Haskus. It allows family members to get the uh, medical records of immediate family members that are deceased without being forced to open an estate. Obviously, the, the bill says that the, the estate has priority. If there is no estate or there is no power of attorney where there has been specific uh, permission by the ward to the principal to get these records after date, and that power of attorney act has been amended to allow that to happen if the ward wants it to happen, then you go to a statutory form where priority to the deceased spouse, you simply sign it and give it to the health care provider and you can get the records upon receipt of the usual statutory fee for medical records. Uh, if they, there's no deceased, deceased spouse, there's three uh, uh, people in not in any order of priority, the brother and sister of the deceased, the, uh, I think the parent of the deceased, or the child of the deceased, but any one of those three uh, may also avail them, themselves of the statutory form. And this will be good for consumers, they won't have to open a state just to get medical records. The third bill is Senate Bill 1259 that requires mortgagees to respond to any written request by the mortgage or in a short sale of residential real estate where there's a bona fide third party offer to uh, buy the property, the mortgage property, the, the mortgage or the mortgagee must respond if the mortgage or sends this bona fide offer on. There appears to be no penalty if the mortgagee does not but I guess it's uh, codifying to make sure that the mortgagee is, has to know about this. And the final two bills, and that 1259, by the way, is sponsored by Senator Silverstein of Chicago, and it is poised to pass the General Assembly uh, this week or in two weeks when the General Assembly comes back for veto session. Two bills that were posted for hearing yesterday, but the hearings were canceled, we may see again. The first is House Bill 1604, and it involves trying to, it's by, sponsored by Senator Sullivan out of the Quincy area, it's trying to elevate uh, the enforcement remedies for visitation interference to make them equal to the enforcement remedies for child support. Uh, the problem with this bill is, uh, although child support and visitation are equally important in different ways, it is, it's difficult to quantify, as opposed to child, it's not an apples to apples comparison, uh, in child support, the spreadsheet comes back from the circuit court clerk. It's either been paid or it's not. Then you go to enforcement. In the visitation uh, interference disputes, that's uh, as clear as mud sometimes, most of the time, what's going on. And it's difficult for judges to parse through and to find out what has occurred and who's at fault before they can even get to the remedy. Um, this is coming from a number of fathers' rights groups who are um, a little in their in their view of the world and their perception is is the judges are not as interested as they should be in visitation interference disputes uh, as I said I think a better explanation may be it's just difficult it's not an apples to orange comparison that bill may be heard in two weeks and the final bill is House Bill 1589 this is a bill 
that the USA Families, which is a part of the Department of Defense, had tried to go, on, go in in all 50 states and make uniform the child custody and visitation standards for standing the same for deployed military personnel. Obviously this is difficult because each 50 states uh, has their own set of unique uh, local laws on that. Uh, Rory Weiler, a Chicago, uh, well-known Chicago lawyer in the suburbs on family law, negotiated this on behalf of ISBA and we've come to some agreement that I think is uh, looks pretty good and it basically tailors the custody and visitation standing part. There's a little tailored part for deployed parents. It makes it uh, those orders temporary so the deployed parent does not have to come back and uh, fight through a clear and convincing burden. Uh, initially this bill started out where you just froze everybody in time while the deployed parent was deployed, but you just simply can't park a kid for you know a deployment of a year or longer without any inter ability of the courts to get involved. Uh, the guiding star still in this uh, bill, in its Senate bill, House Bill 1589, is the best interest of the child. It also allows the courts to use electronic means for deployed parents to participate. And um, we think that may pass out in two weeks, and that is uh, House Bill 1589, sponsored by Representative Pritchard and Senator Mike Jacobs from the Quad Cities. And we will see you in two weeks. Thank you.